Okay, now it's recording. Apologies for that. Yes, thank you. Thanks, Manny. Okay, um, so that's kind of the MEX programme in a nutshell. I hope that kind of explains where we're coming from. Kind of moving on, um, I'm going to hand over to... No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm going to kind of carry on with this slide. So looking at the e-cooking um, scale and support programme. So MEX is working um, on this UK aid funded e-cooking scale and support programme, which is, is kind of located in Tanzania. So as I said, it runs from now until um, early 2026. So we're caveated by the March 26 deadline for MEX. And this programme will start a little bit earlier than that. It's um, been kind of linked to £3.5 million worth of funds. And Anna will explain, explain kind of the different programmes that are part of that. But it's very much designed to support the implementation of the Tanzania National Clean Cooking Strategy. So as I've mentioned, it'll be working across specific objectives and largely or very much in collaboration with Ministry of Energy. So we have six components as part of this programme, of which the key themes are awareness, there's access to materials and infrastructure, um, kind of very much looking at affordability, the policy development, investment and capacity building. And actually, um, I think that kind of forms quite a lot, large body of our work. But our primary objective for this programme is supporting Tanzania to leverage expenditure and gains in capital in electricity access to progress clean cooking through supporting e-cooking. And the MEX programme is very much about e-cooking, um, as I mentioned previously. Also, we are working closely with the Ministry of Energy. And this role will be supporting FCD, FCDO local engagement and ministry activities. So it is very much a new role. So I'm going to kind of give you a little bit of an insight into that role. Um, it's, very, it's essential to support the delivery and cohesiveness of those six programme components. And, and Anna's going to be kind of talking you through those in a, in a second. Ideally, we're looking for a Tanzania um, with existing links or contact into the ministry because it is very much a, a partnership role. So it's about communication. It's about advocating for the work that we're doing and working with stakeholders. It's a part time role for a duration of 17 months. So ideally, this will start in September and it will complete in January 2026. Uh, we envisage that one person could take this role, but I, even um, ideally you could split it between two people. But if that's the case, we'd like to see how that's going to be done in the application. And we're asking for flexibility to support a various um, range of activities. So we have some in mind, but this is very much a developing program of work. So being flexible on um, those activities is kind of key. Um, eligibility is that this applies to any organisation of any size, but as I've mentioned previously, we're looking for a Tanzanian or a Tanzanian based person with English and Swahili skills. So the deliverables for this programme are quite open. Um, however, it's a rolling monthly um, basis for those deliverables. So the idea is that you would um, report on the month's activity previous and then activities that will be happening moving forward. So that will be in those monthly reports that will be submitted to um, the Loughborough University team. We'll be asking you to do a stakeholder mapping. There's quite a lot of work that's already been undertaken in Tanzania, kind of largely led by Anna. But we do um, expect that there'll be additional work that need, be, need to be done. And there'll be regular meetings both with the FCDO and the MEX team. And you'll be working very closely with the country researcher, and, and that person is Anna. There may be a need for you to present at events. Um, we foresee that if Anna isn't in country or our FCDO officer is not available, they may ask you to attend events on their behalf. And we would like you to bring together a working group of stakeholders. We've done this in other um, countries and it's worked very well in making sure we engage those people. And there might also be a need to organise events that support various components of the programme. 
So as I mentioned, we've got a range of partners that we're working with and Anna can explain how some of those fit into the programmes. But it just gives you an idea of this, this is where we are. We'd like to extend that and this role will kind of help in engaging those people and moving this forward. So Anna, I'm going to hand over to you now. Thank you. Thanks, Jane. And hi, everyone. Um, so I'll be describing in a bit more detail the current program that we have in Tanzania, for which we are um, hiring the partnership liaison lead. Um, there are six different components, as you can see here, and I will um, run through them one by one on the following slides. So next slide, please. So the first component is a national e-cooking awareness campaign. Um, so the aim of this is to reach 10% of the population um, at least. And the main purpose is to combat misinformation around the affordability of electric cooking. There's still um, a lot of uh, strongly held beliefs that electric cooking is not affordable, that it's too expensive compared to other fuels. Um, whereas a lot of the data and the research is showing that that is not the case with the highly efficient appliances such as electric pressure cooker or um, air fryer or induction stove. So uh, this national e-cooking awareness campaign, which will be working very much coordinated with the Ministry of Energy um, and specifically their clean cooking communication strategy, uh, will be setting up over the next few months. Um, and it will be a professionally researched and designed campaign to best suit Tanzania and to best speak to Tanzanians about cooking. The second component um, is working with Tanesco, uh, helping them on their e-cooking program. This will be targeting 11,000 households initially, um, targeting both Tanesco staff, but also Tanesco customers. Um, and it'll be supporting Tanesco and we'll be, we're working with Tanesco to help them start promoting electric cooking to their staff and to their customers. Um, and a big component of this of this work stream is to make it possible to pay for e-cooking appliances through the Luku prepayment meters. Now, this is really exciting. Um, we're really excited about this aspect because it makes the affordability of these appliances much more realistic if people can pay over time through their electricity meters. Um, and then the other kind of aim of that program is to uh, create e-cooking champions at Tonesco staff. Uh, number three, institutional electric cooking. The third component, uh, we're working with the World Food Programme and Sustainable Energy for All, who have partnered to bring modern cooking and specifically e-cooking to schools in Tanzania. The initial target, uh, they're looking at 60 schools. These are uh, public schools that have school feeding programmes, so are already working with WFP. Um, the wider program beyond that looks at 200 schools and they've actually identified 5,000 schools that could be um, suitable for a further expansion phase. But uh, the initial part of what MEX is doing in Tanzania is supporting the first 60 schools. And they are also exploring carbon finance um, as a means of financing this transition in the longer term. The fourth component is about repair and maintenance. So as electric cooking increases, as it is expected to do in Tanzania, uh, we need to make sure that uh, there are people out there who are ready to repair and maintain the appliances. So this component will be supporting that uh, by building a network of technicians, of fundies, so that customers can easily access qualified people for maintenance and repair. Um, and part of that is designing a training curriculum for these fundies. Uh, so they know how to repair the uh, electric pressure cooker, the air fryer, the induction stove. Um, and we'll be working closely with the Ministry of Education, Science and Technology and also VETA and NACTVET to integrate that curriculum into existing training programmes that happen already for electricians in Tanzania. Number five. <clears throat> uh, the fifth component is some uh, supply chain support. So there'll be a challenge fund program to support local companies who want to scale up or get into electric cooking um, uh, vending, the business of, of selling e-cooking appliances. And <clears throat> that program will be 
helping them to overcome early stage growth challenges, to supply the appliances, and also to understand the acceptability and affordability of their appliances and kind of the impact of electric cooking. And finally, component six on quality and standards. We are going to be working um, and have started working already with the EU, with the UNDP in Tanzania and with TBS to develop minimum energy performance standards, so energy efficiency standards on e-cooking appliances. Um, and that will also include coming up with a customer labeling system. So that's the thick component of the program. So now I think I'll hand back over to Jane. That was just a bit of an overview of the six components. So the partnership liaison lead will be supporting us to um, deliver these components. And now Jane will be talking about the Delta platform. Thanks, Anna. OK, so I hope that's given you a bit of an oversight of, uh, of the programme activity that, that are currently or will be happening in Tanzania. Um, we think it's really exciting. So I think this role is involved in all of those elements. Um, but the important thing now is how to apply. And I know um, this is an, an easy system to navigate, but I'm hoping that um, this overview will kind of help you to access the information. So the full tender document, <coughs> excuse me, is online at Delta eSourcing platform. If you've not already registered um, on this platform, you need to register as a supplier. So this is your first screen. You need to kind of put in your username and password. Before I kind of start the overview of this, you do need a little bit of time. I did this last night myself and it took probably took about 30 minutes. It's not straightforward, um, but the questions that they ask are quite easy. Um, and once you get into it, it's just kind of waiting for things to download and emails to come back to you. So you start by registering as a supplier. This kind of takes you to a page that's got probably um, 20 uh, boxes for, for you to fill in. They're it, contact details, they're about your organisation, they're kind of asking you uh, what sector you're involved in, and then right at the bottom of the page, it asks for your access code. So this enables you to go directly to the partnership liaison role within that kind of server. Um, that email, you get an email login direct to the email account that you've kind of registered in there. And that then asks you to go to an authentic, authenticator app setup. So you can do this beforehand. Um, I use the Microsoft Authenticator, but for a Google email address. So it doesn't matter which one that you use. You need to make sure that your phone is at the same time as your laptop. If it isn't, then that causes problems in the system. But assuming that's the case, then it's, it's just kind of waiting for your authenticator to download. You get um, a list of backup codes at the bottom of the page that I think it's quite useful for you to keep um, just a kind of uh, a note of those for future reference because they will not be listed again. And then if you save your trusted device, so I'm kind of assuming it might be a, a phone, if you save that there, if you log in in future, and you can choose a um, number of days that it kind of retains that as your trusted device. It's kind of a seamless process to get in again. Um, so as I said before, it is quite time consuming, kind of about 30 minutes, and it always seems longer than that when you're waiting for, for things to kind of happen. But hopefully that kind of gets you into the system. If there are any issues and you can't access it, please send us an email at the our MEX website um, or kind of list that in the chat at, at the end. Um, but equally, you can get in touch with us. You can get in touch with Anna and Anna will then kind of form a, forward emails to us and we can try and address it that way for you. So when you get into uh, the, the dashboard system, this is uh, a rough outline of the screen that you'll see. You get into the response manager and then you need to click onto uh, the new page. Again, you might be asked to put in your access code, which is this code that's at the bottom, and then you submit. And that gets you into um, the kind of all of the details for this, uh, this uh, role. So there's the tender document, there's um, our due diligence document and another couple of pieces of work. 
So this is your stage one overview. There are three stages. Kind of stage one is all of your information. Stage two will be um, your application so you can upload. And then stage three is your completion. So there's a number of documents as noted here. Um, the tender document hopefully is kind of self-explanatory. It gives you details about the role. It kind of tells you, um, outlines all of the activities that you'll be involved in, <clears throat> but it also gives you information about the questions that we're asking and how you need to respond. Um, the response is undertaken via the response documents, which is the quality answers. So that's the text answers. And then there's a price document. And each of the questions that we're asking for you to address, um, there'll be an indication of the number of pages that we're expecting you to see. So please don't load more than the anticipated page number. Um, it's to, to help us to kind of have a smoother process when we're reviewing. Um, it does enable you to submit all of the documents that we're asking for. So kind of your CV can include it, be included in that. Um, on the due diligence side, there are quite a number of documents that we need um, listed there and they're, they're all part of that document. So the due diligence and the safeguarding questionnaire is, is mandatory. It's something that we need to do as part of SCDO funding and we need to kind of pass that down to you. Again, it's quite a lengthy document, but I think it's um, once you start working through it, it's less onerous than you think. Uh, there are a number of documents that you need to attach to support um, that, but we're asking for people to supply that at the same time as the application, because it usually takes another two weeks for us to um, submit, review and turn it around. And we'd like to get somebody in place at the beginning of September for this process. The other two documents that are on there are the subcontract agreement and the grant disbursement agreement. So what we want to do with this role is let you know what our terms and conditions are for the contract up front. Please con concentrate on the grant disbursement agreement, the GDA, because that's the one that we'll be using. Have a look through. If you've got any queries, please do come back to us and let us know and we'll address them. But we're assuming that you'll be happy with um, the terms and conditions as that's our standard contracting. So um, stage two is the response documents. And as I've mentioned, we ask you to upload everything that's associated with this role. And then stage three is you submit your response. So a couple of key points is once you've registered or authenticated, um, save your device. So then it makes it much easier for you to log in again. The access code, um, is is kind of listed here you'll find it on our website so if you don't kind of take a note of it here then um, you can kind of find that online as i mentioned there's a message center if you've got any queries about using the delta um, platform please use that message center that goes directly to our procurement team and then they can address any issues if there are issues that aren't related to using the platform they will kind of contact us. And it seems a little bit onerous doing it this way around, but these we have to kind of abide by the procurement rules for the UK, which is why our um, tenders had to go through this uh, Delta e-sourcing platform. So only applications that are made through the portal will be accepted. Um, I'm afraid we can't accept anything that comes via email and only applications made on the response forms will be accepted. So I've highlighted about the due diligence and the supporting evidence that we need and also that we'd ask you to have a look at our grant disbursement agreement. So just to reiterate, there are a few key dates for this. Um, closing date for the applications is Monday the 29th of July at 11.59 BST. Um, we won't be accepting any late applications, I'm afraid. And if we need to, we will undertake um, interviews following the evaluate, evaluation, which will happen on the week commencing the 5th of August. So ideally, we'd like to let people know the following week. If there are some queries, there might be interviews. Um, contract start date ideally is the 2nd of September 2024. 
most of the programs that Anna outlined are only just starting. Um, few of them are actually contracting. So you'll be coming in right at the very beginning of this program. The sooner we can kind of get that person or persons on board, oh, the better for us. And it means that you can kind of help support right from the very beginning. And the contract completion date will be the 16th of January 2026. OK, so I hope that's clear. Um, I realise that we've kind of ran to time, but we can we can kind of stay for a little longer if people have questions. Um, so I'm going to kind of open the floor up to up to you guys. So please feel free to ask if you're not comfortable asking online. You can kind of type it into the chat box and we'll kind of have a have a, have a look at what what people are asking. OK. Mandara. Hello, um, thank you very much for the presentation. Um, I was just wondering to do with like the documents that are due diligence, um, will they require signing? And if um, if so, do we sign them as we submit them? Or will those be signed during a later stage like negotiations? We just fill in the, the forms or do we sign them as well if they require signing? So don't. Sorry about that. Um, don't sign the form. Um, don't sign the contract. We'll do that kind of separately. And the contract is just our kind of standard template. Um, that is kind of there just for reference. If you've got any questions, then please kind of come come to us for those. Um, any of the other documents, so the due diligence document, if you can sign that, it would be appreciated. Um, there are some documents that are also listed at the end of the tender document which need your signature and they're just it's a signature to say that you've read and accepted the information that's kind of listed in there is that okay yes thank you very much and i apologize for the dog okay any other questions? Yes, Alpha, we're going to kind of copy this. Um, well, we'll save this recording and we'll put it online, um, hopefully by the end of the week. So you'll be able to have access to it. The presentation will be part of that. But if you want a copy of the presentation, we can kind of make that available to everybody that's kind of signed up for the webinar. And I've just noticed that Manny's kind of listed the program email. So if you've got any queries that um, are about accessing the portal, if you email mex at Loughborough, which is L-B-O-R-O dot A-C dot U-K. Um, alternatively, if you kind of know Anna, you've got Anna's email address. That's Anna at Gamos dot org. Is that right, Anna? Yeah, and we can kind of get, um, get back to you. Um, once we go through the tender documents, are we allowed to send over those questions? Not sure what you mean by that, Alpha. Any questions? Oh, so if you've got questions following the tender documents, are you allowed to send those over? Yes, we'll kind of happily have a look at them. If you use the, um, the message, in the portal, then they'll kind of come directly to us. Just waiting for Charles is writing a question. No. OK. Anything that you think we might have missed, Anna? <clears throat> no, I think it's fine. I think, but there is still some typing going on. So if we can hang on another minute or so, it probably is. I think we're going to get a couple more questions. Okay. But if anyone wants to unmute and just speak to them, you're also very welcome to. Hi. Ooh. Hello. Hi, Peter. 
Yeah, just a quick just a quick question. So I read somewhere that uh, consortiums are allowed to team up. So I'm asking, are all members of a consortium, uh, do they need to send in, send in individual um, due diligence documents or just uh, the lead, uh, the lead consortium member? Just the lead. Um, and if there's a consortium, um, so I think our kind of perception is that this role will be one or two people. Um, some of the other pieces of work that we're tendering are kind of more uh, suitable for consortiums. But you need to explain how that will work. So how you kind of have more than one person or organisation kind of involved and how you're going to ensure that there'll be continuity throughout the kind of role. Oh, so you're looking for individuals and not companies, organisations, because I'm, I'm, that's where I'm... I'm I'm missing something. No, so it can be an individual within an organized, well, it could be an organization, but we would want a named individual or individuals. Okay. Yeah. Or it can be an individual. So it can be kind of, you know, it could be a, a standalone um, consultant. It can be an organisation with named people that will be working and you would then need to highlight how many days each person would be working and how you would separate it out. So whether you've got two people, one person that's got really good skills in kind of presenting and another person that's got connections into those organisations that will be working with, particularly the Ministry of Energy. OK, thanks. OK. Okay, any other questions? There is an opportunity for you to get in touch with us when you've had a look at the documentation. So um, please do have a look at it as soon as you can. So it then gives you kind of plenty of time to come back to us. But if there are no further questions, I kind of suggest that we end here um, and hopefully look forward to receiving some some proposals from you. Okay. Thanks, thank everyone. You. Thank you. Okay. Goodbye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye.